Hello and welcome to Shared Reading. We've got an exciting day today. We are going to be starting the book Holes, uh, just an excerpt from it. But before we begin, I would love for you guys to know what you're getting yourself into. So I actually included the trailer for Holes, uh, the movie, in this slide. So I want you to click on it and watch the trailer. You and your family will be cursed for always and eternity. Walt Disney Pictures brings the award-winning book to life. Holes. My name is Stanley Yelnets. All my life I seem to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. My grandpa says it's because of this 150-year-old curse. There's no curse on this family. There is on the men in this family. It's all because you're no good, dirty, rotten, pig-stealing, great-great-grandpa. <laughs> Welcome to Camp Green Lake. Where's the lake? <laughs> <laughs> this is Stanley. I can't remember my family names their son Stanley because it's yelling that's backwards. Oh, well, that's interesting. Did you tell them about the lizards? You don't bother them, and they won't bother you. <laughs> Now, to break his family's curse, it's destiny. You have to solve a mystery. We say we dig one more hole. Why? I feel lucky. And find what's hidden at Camp Green Lake. What is that? I think I might have found something. What'd you find? You better get down here. We're going to gather key events happening in the story. We're also interested in the characters and how they add to the story. We're looking at their actions, their thoughts, and what they're saying to help analyze them and to see how they interact with each other. Stanley's Release, an excerpt from Holes by Louis Chazar. Holes is a new Barry Award-winning book by Lewis Czar about an adolescent boy, Stanley Yelnitz, who was punished for a crime he didn't commit and unjustly sent to a boy's juvenile detention center in Camp Green Lake, a dry, flat wasteland in Texas, where he and the other boys are forced to dig five-foot holes in the desert. Although the warden claims this punishment is meant to build the boy's character, She's actually searching for something valuable, a treasure that was buried over a hundred years ago by a teacher turned bandit named Kate Barlow. So it happens that Kate Barlow had stolen this treasure from Stanley's great grandfather during a robbery. However, Stanley does not know this when we meet him in the following passage. What he does know, or believe, is that he and his family have had bad luck for generations due to a curse put on his great-great-grandfather by a one-legged gypsy. In this excerpt from the book, Chapter 48, Stanley's lawyer, Miss Marengo, who arrives at the, Cape, uh, at the camp with Texas Attorney General, has finally managed to secure Stanley's release, but she must first face the ill-tempered and devious warden, who is determined to blame Stanley for yet another crime he has not committed. Stanley's strong sense of loyalty to his friend Hector Zero Zeroni comes through in this excerpt, 
as he refuses to leave Camp Green Lake without him. Stanley does not yet realize that his friendship with Hector will finally put an end to the curse that has been hanging over his family's fortune for centuries. They slowly walked back to camp. The tall man was the attorney, Texas Attorney General, the chief law enforcement officer for the state. Stanley's lawyer was named Miss Marenko. Stanley held the suitcase. He was so tired, he couldn't think straight. He felt as if he was walking in a dream, not quite able to comprehend what was going on around him. They stopped in front of the camp office. Mr. Sir went inside to get Stanley's belongings. The Attorney General told Mr. Pendensky to get the boy something to drink and eat. The warden seemed as dazed as Stanley. It, you can't even read, he said to Zero. Zero said nothing. Miss Marengo put a hand on Stanley's shoulder and told him to hang in there. He would be seeing his parents soon. She was shorter than Stanley, but somehow gave the appearance of being tall. Mr. Pendensky turned with, returned with two cartons of orange juice and two bagels. Stanley drank the juice, but didn't feel like eating anything. Wait, the warden exclaimed. I, I didn't say they stole the suitcase. It's his suitcase, obviously. But, but he put my things in the cabin inside it. That isn't what you said earlier, said Miss Marenko. All right, so we started reading this excerpt, and I noticed that this is from part of the book that's in chapter 48. So that means I totally skipped chapters 1 through 47, and I have absolutely no idea what's going on. I just started reading the text at chapter 48, being very confused. Luckily, in this first section here, they're giving us a lot of background information. All these words are in italics. It's kind of like that slanted text. And it gives me some background info of what's been going on. It tells me different characters. Like I find out who Stanley is. I find out his lawyer's name. I find out his friend Zero's name. We find out characters. We also find out what's been going on. We find out that he's been sent to a boy's juvenile detention center for something he didn't even do. And we know that the lawyer finally was able to get Stanley back home and away from this camp. But Stanley seems to have a different idea because it looks like he's refusing to leave the camp without Zero. So off to the side, just to remind myself of what's been going on in chapters 1 through 47, I wrote, Stanley was sent to detention center for a crime he didn't commit. His lawyer can now get him out after facing the warden, but Stanley won't leave without zero. So now that I have that background information, I can actually start reading the excerpt and find my key events. When I start reading this next section here, I realize I come back from somewhere, I'm not really sure where, but I've got this warden and she seems excited or something. I don't know. She says, but down in paragraph nine, wait, the warden exclaimed, I didn't say they stole the suitcase. It's his suitcase, obviously, but he put my things from my cabin inside it. I wanted to underline that because that is a key event. That is something that seems big right now. She is actually accusing Stanley of something. He's, he's, she's accusing him of a crime I don't think Stanley committed. So off to the side, I wanted to write down in my own words that the warden accuses Stanley of stealing her belongings. This might help me understand what's happening in the story based on this event. All right, we're gonna pause here for today. I know it's like super exciting. I'm wondering what's going to happen next. The warden is accusing Stanley of stealing. Oh, goodness gracious. Stanley doesn't want to leave without zero. Oh, how is this all going to play out? 
What I would love for you to do is write your prediction in this box off to the um, right. And kind of tell me, what do you think will happen next?